Okay, now we have our sketch. We need to get our sketch into the computer somehow. And we have our references. Now we need to start building it up. And we're going to build it right on top of our sketch. So I'm going to go to my sketch file, which I already started because I sketched it digitally as a PSD. But if I did it in a sketchbook and then took a picture of it and then opened it up, the first thing I'm going to do with my sketch is I'm going to make it large enough. So I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to change its width and height to be at least 8 by 10. So mine is going to be minimum 10 by 10 and a minimum of 300 pixels per inch. Right? And in order to change the pixel dimensions, you have to make sure that resample is checked. So this is under image, image size in Photoshop. And if you want to go bigger, I do want to go bigger. I'm going to go to 14 by 14 inches uh, by 350 pixels per inch. So I'm going like heroic scale. But as long as it's at least 8 by 10, so if it's in a square, it should be 10 by 10. By 300, you are meeting the basic minimum print qual qualifications. And some of you got, got tripped up with your landscape, right? It it's, didn't ever get to the 300 threshold, and you stayed at 72, which is screen resolution. That all starts at the beginning. So if I check my image size now, it should be larger than 8 by 10, larger than 300 pixels per inch. And I can see that at the bottom left of the Photoshop window, it will say 14 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. What did that do to my sketch quality? It might have softened it, blurred it a little bit, but it's fine. This is just my, my planning sketch. Okay, next, I'm going to put guides around it. I'm going to kind of frame in where my creature is. At least on my sketch. And I do that with the Move tool and the rulers. If you don't see your rulers, just hit Command-R, and that will toggle your rulers on and off. You just click on your ruler, and you can drag out a guide. Now, I'm going to give myself some working space so I can bring in my references and have places to work and cut them out without them all overlapping each other. So I'm going to go to Image Canvas Size, just like we did before for our landscape, and I'm going to make it 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. I use 30 by 40. It's fairly arbitrary, but that's the largest print size that uh, a professional press can handle. It's just a kind of a size I want you to vaguely know about. That does not mean we're making our image 30 by 40 inches. This is just kind of our extension of a desk space. And I'm going to make that extension color gray. So I'm still just on one layer here. But it could be on multiple layers. So for instance, if I wanted to cut out my sketch just within those boundaries, I can with just the rectangular selection tool, marquee tool. Then I can hit Command J. It floats it on its own layer. And then I can fill my background layer entirely with gray. Edit, fill, 50% gray. And now they're on two different layers. Either way works, because this is just a plan in our workspace. Now I'm going to lock those so I don't accidentally mess with them later. And I'm going to bring in my head reference. So my head reference I marked as gray. I can also view these based on tags, and they'll show them by my different color categories, right? So I have wings, head, tail. I think I'm missing one for the tail. I marked that the wrong color. Yep, so tail, uh, torso, and legs, right? And then something extra that I might want to use. <laughs> I've got more than five, but as long as you have at least five by the end of the project, you're meeting the requirements. And this was my sharpest in-focused head, so I'm going to drag and drop this in. And immediately, 
It's going to come in. You can see it's bigger than it needs to be. I'm just going to hit return, and I'm immediately going to use my lasso, roughly cut around it with a lot of overlap, especially into the neck. And then I'm going to hit command J, and then I'm going to immediately delete the smart object to save memory. So now I've got a head floating. If you noticed, while I was cutting it out with my lasso, even though I was doing this very rough cut, you can see how it got really angular here and here. That's because when you're using your lasso and you have your guides out, the lasso wants to stick to the guides. Those guides are helpful, but if you want to get cleaner cuts with your lasso, hit Command semicolon to hide your guides. They're still there, but Command semicolon will, will make it so your lasso doesn't stick to them. Okay, my next head asset, let's bring in is what I wanted to use for the eye. I can bring that in, hit return, immediately use my lasso, because this is a smart object, and I'm going to grab all this stuff that I think I might be able to use. Even going down into the neck. And then I'm going to duplicate Command J and delete the smart object. And then I can even kind of rough place them on top of each other. But I have a lot more control than just that, right? I can control the size. I can control the rotation. I can distort it, warp it, and blend these in. If I just do a quick Command T and just rotate it, I can kind of line that up, right? And then it's just about blending and making it match. But I want something more than that for the head. Because I don't like it when the head just comes from one creature, even if it's from two different hummingbirds. There's a, a Woody Allen joke, and Woody Allen's kind of a canceled figure, but there's a really good joke that I, I always loved growing up. And he said, it's a mythological beast with the head of a lion and a body of a lion, but not the same lion. But if you do that compositing, it's not that interesting. When you play that back, you'll laugh uproariously. All right. So I'm going to use not just the head of a, of a woodpecker and, and the eye of a woodpecker, but I'm also going to use the, the jaw of a different creature. So I'm going to put this caiman in there, and I'm immediately going to lasso around with lots of overlap, what I think is useful. I don't have a lot of neck to use here, but I've got a lot of nice scales in a sharp focus. I'm going to duplicate that, I'm going to erase what it comes from, and then to place it, I might take my opacity down just so I can get a sense of where it might overlap with this beak, right? Because it's a very different structure. So I think maybe about there. And then I can even go right in and go with my 100% eraser. So this is using all the skills we used last time. And... I can make it soft edged as long as it's 100% and pretty big and I can start shearing it away on one side and getting a sense of how this might be useful. So this is all just kind of rough placing. Then I might decide, okay, I want to push it back a little bit further and then erase out where the eye is. But then I can always do Command T and I can do things. I would start with things like distort to kind of match the angle instead of going to warp right away because warp will sometimes lose that structure of the skeleton, or in this case of the jaw. But you can see how I can get that head. I'm going to move the eye a little bit, but now it's all kind of working along the lines of my sketch. Right? I would have loved it if I found a caiman mouth that was open. And I might have to switch to like an alligator or something, but I could still add a lower jaw as well. I have a lot of options here, but I'm liking that so far. Okay, now... The head is the focal point of the creature. So I'm going to use the analogy for this project of, of assembling a car. 
No one person builds a car usually. It's teams of people, usually all like on a conveyor belt, and you do certain sections in different parts of the factory, and then at the end you put them all together. And they all get bolted onto a chassis, right? So the head is like the engine of your creature. It's the thing that matters. An engine matters in a car because without that, it's not a car. It doesn't go. So we want the head to have all the personality you want your creature to have because that's where the person's going to look first. So that's where I might composite two or three different references together to get it right. Now the rest, if the engine is right, then I just need something that holds it all together and is a good vehicle for that engine. So now... I'm going to do the same thing with the, the chest. So I have this big part, which is going to be the bulk of that chest. And again, I want lots of overlap. I know I don't need the head, but I might want all of that neck. And though I have different talons and wings and things, that's how much I want. I duplicate it with Command-J, then delete the smart object. And instead of immediately trying to size it or place it or put it on, I'm just going to kind of tilt it a little bit and build it over here. Try to match my sketch with lots of space. Now, are there other parts of the chest I need? Well, I need the talons. And I have two kind of options. I have these, which are nice and crisp and help the silhouette, especially when I cut out the the uh, the prey that it has, and I have these, which are a little bit more active but don't have the color, right, and the contrast. And you know what? It doesn't take long, especially since this one's already cut out from Pixabay, to just roughly try them both. So I'm going to cut out this lower half, like the pelvis, hips, and legs. Try moving that on. You see how well that works, right? Because it's all connected with the spine and the chassis. And it helps that they're, they're all birds of prey. And then I can try it with this one. Notice this one's a little bit smaller when it comes in, which means its native resolution is a little bit smaller. So even though it was a sharper photograph, maybe by the time I make it big enough, because I'm working at large resolution, Maybe it's not going to be quite as strong, but it's got the benefit of having more overlap into the chest. Command J, delete the smart object, move that on. Right. And now I know that I need to, to match this scale at least. I need to play with distort and make those feet a lot bigger. Maybe even warp them so that this foot can be quite a bit bigger. While keeping the anatomy from getting what I call macaroni, right? You don't want like macaroni limbs. You want to understand where the joints are, so there's some strength to it. So I see strong joints there, strong joints here. So that's going to work. So then I decide, okay, what's kind of more compelling? That's tough. I think this is kind of just working with the lighting better. Yeah, so I might just turn that off for now, keep it in reserve. I think I'm going to go with this because I like kind of that structure of the body and how that tail kind of flows out a little bit more. Even though I'll need to cut this out eventually. Okay, so now I move to the wings. Wings can be tricky because feathers are tricky. Because feathers are translucent. They're like fingernail material. So their edges can be tricky. So, But the first thing I'm going to do is make it big enough to run behind the chest. So I'm going to start layering it down. behind all these things, and I need to make it big enough to go behind the chest, but I want kind of dopey wings, you know, so I don't want it so big that they're actually believable, that they are like six times bigger than the body. 
And remember,